In this video, I'll be covering the steps involved in creating an architectural dimension style and then show you how to place dimensions on the guest cottage. The dimension style uh, settings that I'm going to be using are located in the back of Chapter 6 in the uh, Technical Drawing 101 with AutoCAD 2014 textbook. So let's get started. We're going to make an architectural dimension style first and in order to begin that we can go to the dimension toolbar and pick on the last icon. If I pick on that it's going to open up the uh, dimension style manager and I can start but before I do that I'm going to show you a couple of other ways that you can open up the dimension style manager. One way is to go to the annotation tab pick on the down arrow right here where it says annotation and select this icon right here. That will open up your Dimension Style Manager. Another way is to select the Annotate tab. Look at the Dimension panel and there is a down arrow right here. Picking on that will also open it up. So that's at least three ways you can get into it. Alright, so my current Dimension Style is standard. This is the one that comes in whenever you open AutoCAD. And so what I'm going to do is select the New button. What this does is it takes me to the Create New Style dialog box and it's asking me for a new style name and it's going to base this new style off my standard settings that are in place right now. So what I'm going to do right here is I'm going to type in my new style name which I'm going to name ARC, A-R-C-H for architecture and then I'm going to put the number 48 behind it and there's nothing special about naming it ARC48. It's just the name of this uh, style that I'm going to show you. Once I have that in, I press the Continue button. Now that takes me to uh, the tabs of my Dimension Style Manager over here. And uh, the first tab that I'm going to select is actually the Primary Units tab. And I want to go through this and set everything up. So the first thing I want to check is make sure that I have Architectural Units set for my unit format. For precision, I want to pick on this and I'm going to select the one half inch precision. All right. The next thing I'm going to do under the fraction format, right now it says horizontal, I'm going to select not stacked. So this would be fractions would not be stacked one over the other. Uh, let's see if there's anything else I need to change in here. My scale factor is set to one decimal degree, zero. I, th I think everything's okay here. So the next tab I'm going to select is Symbols and Arrows. Pick on that. And I'm going to change over from arrowheads to architectural tick marks. So to do that I'm going to pick on this down arrow, go down and select architectural tick, and you'll see that it, it loaded my second arrow already with an architectural tick. For the leader I'm going to go ahead and for right now keep that in close filled with an arrowhead. My arrow size, I'm going to set this to 3 16. So I'm just going to type 3 slash 16. Uh, let me see. I want my center mark set to line, my break size set to 1 8. Preceding dimension text, I want to go ahead and have that checked like that. My jog angle is that, and then 1 and a half. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is uh, go to the lines tab. I'm going to pick on that and I want to set this to by block. I want to have this by block and this by block and right here extend beyond tick marks I'm going to set that uh, to 3 16 3 slash 16. Um, my next one is dimension or baseline dimension that's at 3 8 that looks good. Uh, by block all this looks good so far over here I want to set this to, uh, to 3 16 right here and then offset from origin I'm going to keep that at 1 16th and then the length at 1 and the next tab I'm going to select is the text tab and uh, on the text tab what I'm going to set this to is my standard text style. Now one thing I should point out in my standard text style the font that I have assigned to my standard text style is Stylus BT because I want an architectural looking font and, and Stylus BT sort of looks like a hand lettered font. Okay, I want this to be by block, I want this to be none. My text height is 1 8, uh, fraction height 1, 
see if there's anything else I need to change in here. My offset from the dimension line, I'm going to set that to 1 16th. And then I want to select my text alignment to be aligned with the dimension line. Now doing that will uh, mean that when I have a vertical dimension, it's going to be aligned with the dimension line. Uh, it's kind of like what this example is showing right here. And uh, I feel like I'm missing something on this. Let me look and see what it is. I've got centered. That's where I... Okay, so what I want to do with my text is I want my text to be above the line. Because in architectural uh, work, normally we place the text above the line. Uh, horizontal text can continue to be centered. The view direction is left to right. At that point, I'm ready to look at the last tab that I need to pick on here, which is the Fit tab. And I'm going to put leave this at either text and arrows beside the dimension line. But here's uh, something I am going to change. I'm going to pick on this button right here. And what this is, the scale for the dimension features, is whatever number I multiply, every whatever number I place in here is going to be a multiplier for all the settings I have. And so if I put this at 24, for example, and I have my uh, text height set to 1 8, but I have this number set to 24, it's going to take 1 8 and multiply that times 24, which is going to result in 3 inch tall text in my dimensions. And uh, that's what I want. I want everything that all these settings that I have to be larger than what they appear to be, because when I dimension them, they're actually going to be dimensioned right on uh, my floor plan. OK, now just to quickly look at alternate units, we want to make sure that there is not a checkbox in alternate units and that tolerances is set to none, because we, we don't want alternate units or tolerances on this plan. So I'm going to select the OK button. That's going to take me back to my Dimension Style Manager. And you can see that I have ARC48 here set uh, has been created. I'm going to pick on that and pick Set Current and then pick close. All right. Now the next thing I want to do is go pick on my home tab here and I want to make sure that I'm on the dimension layer. So I have a layer named dim and I want to place these dimensions on that layer. So I'm going to zoom in here a little bit closer and place some dimensions. So the first dimension is going to come from the corner of my uh, little cottage here to the midpoint of this three foot wide door. And I know I'm going to have to snap to something in here. And I don't have a snap point that would place that dimension right there in the center of that door. But I have a trick, and I'm going to show you how to do it. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to my dimension toolbar and pick on the linear dimension tool. So I'm going to select that. And it asks me for the first extension line. I'm going to snap to the end point right here at the corner of the house. And now what I'm looking for is the middle, the midpoint between this door jam and that door jam. And the midpoint it's finding is not the midpoint that I want there. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to hold down the Shift key on my keyboard. So I've pressed down on Shift. I'm going to right click my mouse. And there's a tool here that says Mid between two points. I'm going to pick on that. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to select at this door jam and I'm going to select at this door jam. And then I'm going to move my mouse down. And, I, and by moving my text, my mouse to the inside, I can place that text on the inside. I'm going to move away from the house uh, the distance that I want, want it to be away. So that could be 2 feet or 3 feet or 27 inches, whatever the setting is that you want. And just pick. Now, I've placed my first dimension. And remember, I placed this dimension by using the linear uh, dimension tool. So for my next dimension, I'm going to go from this extension line on this dimension to the midpoint of this window. And, and so instead of going back to linear, what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to come down here to this tool, which is the Continue Dimension tool. I'm going to pick on Continue. And what that does is it starts a dimension where my last dimension ended. So all I need to do now is go find the midpoint of that window and pick. And you can see it just put in a dimension of 4, 6. And it keeps me in that command, so I'm going to go to the midpoint of this window. I'm going to snap to the midpoint of that window. And I'm going to complete this line by just picking on the endpoint or the corner of the house and then pressing Escape. So you can see that that created an entire row 
of dimensions. So remember, I place my first dimension using linear, and as soon as I place it, I go to continue, which starts at this extension line and just start picking the endpoints or the, picking the midpoints or whatever the geometry is that I want to go to to collect to uh, create the next one. Now I need one overall dimension, so I'm going to go back to linear, and this time I'm going to snap from the center or the right here where my architectural tick mark is to the tick mark at this end down here, and then I'm going to drop down and place a dimension right there. Now I want to point something out to you. I'm I would like for this to say 18 feet 0 inches, and I'm not seeing that here, so that tells me that I have a setting that I need to, to check. And so I'm just going to pick right here in my command line, and I'm going to type uh, a dimension variable called dimzin, D-I-M-Z-I-N, and press enter and it says enter a new value for dims in and it says it's at 4 I'm going to actually type that to 7 set that to 7 press enter and then I'm going to do an update on that so here's my dimension update I'm going to pick on this and press enter and it changed that so usually you're going to see that 0 anyway but I just wanted to point out to you that occasionally you may not and so this could be a dims in variable that controls uh, the visibility of zeros alright so let's look at uh, placing some more dimensions on this floor plan. This time I want to put a row of dimensions that runs up the left side of the floor plan. So I'm going to start by picking on the linear dimension. I'm going to snap to my corner. Uh, the next place I'm going to go to is going to be the midpoint of that window. I'm going to move out. And at this point I should move out about the same distance uh, that I used when I placed this row down here. And I always check that later and make sure they're exactly the same. All right, so now I want a dimension from the middle of that window to the corner of the house. So instead of going to linear, I'm going to go back to continue. And at that point, all I need to do is go to the corner of the house and press enter. Now that gives me those two dimensions. And I should finish off this row of dimensions with a linear dimension that goes again from my, I'm just going to snap from tick mark to tick mark right up here. I want to move out about the same distance that I did on that first row of dimensions that I placed and pick right there. All right, now I'm going to do the same thing across the top of the house. I'm going to start with linear, snap to this end point, go to the midpoint right here, move out, pick, uh, go to my continue command, and uh, next place I want to come to is the inside corner of this wall pick right there and then I want to go to this corner and pick and then press escape pick linear again snap from my tick mark to my tick mark move out locate that in the center and pick and then the last row of dimensions I'm going to start with a linear dimension I'm going to start at this corner right down here uh, I'm going to go to the inside corner of this wall and uh, find my location. Like again, I want to be out about the same distance. Pick there. Pick my continue option and snap to the corner. Press escape. And then finish this one off with a linear dimension that will go from tick mark to the opposite tick mark over here. Center the text by moving my mouse into the text and pick. And uh, at that point, I have my dimensions applied uh, to this project. Now, there are two dimensions that are applied to the inside, and you would do those the same way, and I've already got those. And so, again, in order to locate this dimension right here, I'm going to delete that guy out <clears throat> show you what I do. I'm going to pick on linear, snap to this inside corner, and now I want to snap to a point between those two door jams right there. So I'm going to hold down Shift, right click, select mid between two points, snap to that corner, snap to this corner, and you'll notice it finds the midpoint between those points. I'm going to move my mouse over because I want that text to be centered more like that. Now, if I don't get the text exactly where I want it, it's not too big of a deal because when you pick on uh, a dimension, you'll see the blue grips, and you can actually drag the dimension to where you want it to be. You can move the text wherever you want it to be, and just pick and move it around. And that finishes this video.